there's been a lot of to do around like text to image generation. So that's like Dolly and like prompts where you can like specify something and then it actually like makes something based on that prompt. I didn't know that there were also some other interesting ones like text to audio. You can, oh, yeah. you can say the sound of a horse like clomping uh, with like a rain on uh, like a tin roof and the sound of thunder. And it will yeah. literally generate that audio scene. And it's very creepy like the audio so that comes just to it. clarify that it's not text to speech it's text, text to audio so let's take a look at some of this so uh, text to speech yeah yeah there's some cool developments in this text mm -hmm. to audio uh the sound of a train people walk talking birds chirping you can specify a man speaks and birds chirp and dogs bark and it actually like the the speech is unintelligible but if you were like halfway you know kind of mm -hmm. waking up like this is it sounds like you know somebody talking in the other room and these other noises so uh it doesn't sound cheap like it doesn't sound mm -hmm. like a bunch of audio clips just like mashed on top of each other uh, there's enough like microphone distortion like other mm -hmm. stuff that it actually sounds plausible like the way that we're used to hearing these sounds so the fact that you could generate an audio environment that would make mm -hmm. someone think that you're in a very specific place and and do this from scratch like that is something that I had no idea was so easy to mm. do or that there were tools available to do that. Yeah. And that sounds like a high dollar like uh, audio editing tool, because like I could see a, a lot of video editors using that for like background or ambiance type noise. But then also that seems very scary for um, like uh, targeted phishing attacks, you know, because I've seen phishing attacks where, you know, you need like a baby crying in the background to like give a sense of urgency or something like that. Like if you could real time like create any audio scene that you needed, that could be yeah, the sound useful. of a landlord knocking. Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry. I have to go. Yeah. Um, yeah. So very, very creepy. So look, look, there's a lot here. So okay. what about audio to audio? What, what do you think that would be? Well, audio to audio is, let's say I record a very short clip of Michael saying something. Mm. I could then feed that into this model, which will then extrapolate mm. what we, what he's saying with a language model and also mimic his voice. So what uh, this is doing is it's taking a prompt mm -hmm. and it is doing speech continuation. Nay, nay, lording, answered Wolf. We know not how to call you lord or lady. We have lived too long in the forest and are now I, I implore you to check this out because it's really cool. They will uh, both do speech and things like piano. So in this case, mm -hmm. they're playing a very small part on a piano. And the, the learning model is basically completing mm. the song the way it imagines it should go. Oh. So you could start with like a very, for, mm -hmm. so for artistic things, you could start with something very, very small mm -hmm. and then end up with an entire composition based on the pacing and the sound and the other attributes of the initial audio clip. Whereas uh, with speech, again, you could start out with a very small mm -hmm. bit of really recorded speech and extrapolate that into something that the person never said. Um, so that is really yeah. weird that's really interesting because I, I do use a tool for work here uh that allows me to have a person read a paragraph and then i can recreate their voice but it, i've not seen that applied to other generic audio sounds before so that'll be really interesting to see how that's used yeah so then of course we have a uh, text to video so rather than just having you know the the like dolly style mm -hmm. like images you can actually continue that animation and some of these are really weird um, you know, they're, they kind of look like, uh, this looks like um, Skyrim, I guess. <laughs> like, I don't really know, like, the animation style. But you can get pretty specific. And while these are not, uh, like, particularly stunning in terms of the quality, the fact that they are completely generated from prompts is really interesting. Um, so another one is uh, using these sorts of, like, 3D models. So rather than making it kind of a flat animation, as the first one did, it's able to create, like, look at this flying dog dressed as Superman or like a, you know, <laughs> nice. like a bear painting itself, mm -hmm. um, a, an, an endless line of unicorns running along the beach or whatever, you know, it was, uh, this is, this is weird looking. Um, so text to motion, this is describing an action that a human would take and then having like a human model be able to actually do that. So in this case, mm -hmm. these prompts are a person walks forward, bends down to pick something up off the ground. And you're having natural looking movement models being generated by these text prompts that allow you to specify what you want like a 3D model to do and do it. So if you're like, 
making a deep fake or mm -hmm. you're uh, creating a video game. Like this would give you the ability to create natural looking motion for doing certain things with enough variation um, that it looks organic. It looks like really like good, honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, so we also have another text emotion. This one's a little bit, you know, less sophisticated, but if you're doing like a, a stick model and you're just mm -hmm. mapping something over this, then uh, you really have something here in terms of being able to make motions that are not, you know, programmed explicitly. Um, so that leads us to text to 3D models. Oh, so, that's spooky. Yeah, so being yeah. able to create 3D models of objects, perhaps to then skin with this motion, mm -hmm. uh, is also something that is currently possible that I was not really aware of. So the fact that you can generate these like relatively, you know, decent little 3D mm -hmm. models based on text prompts is something that, uh, again, I just did not know was possible. And here are some other examples of ones that have color built in um, and are approaching the level that I imagine people could have sold as an NFT uh, oh a, a couple months back. You know, like the squirrel uh, freaking out about pie charts, like in particular, I think I if I was caught up in that NFT craze, I would have probably gone for that one. A, a ghost eating a hamburger. But if you wanted to print this out or if you wanted to animate it, then all the tools kind of exist in these tool chains to be able to do that. Now, I don't know about brain to text. I'm not, I don't mm. know. I don't know about this one. Um, it's very interesting, but I'm going to focus on these other ones because yeah. I'm a little bit more interested in like this hippo eating a watermelon that was generated by like a, a text prompt. So how long do you think it is until all of this is combined so that a person, say, could make a deep fake by simply feeding a prompt to a machine and say like, President Joe Biden an announces to the news that everyone gets a million dollars or some, you know, stuff like that. Um, like, an, like I'm just going to say the adult entertainment industry is going to use this far before the, the nefarious deep fake crowd uses mm -hmm. it, um, just based on historical experience with how new technology enters the market. So I right. think we're a ways off. 